Hi, this is Jacob from Sapphire. We are taking a look at The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, a hot new RPG from CD Projekt Red. In this gameplay video we are doing things slightly differently and as you guys asked for in comments, we will focus on the technical side, how The Witcher 3 runs on our Sapphire graphics cards, show you a bunch of geeky parameters, as well as some tips and tweaks to smooth out your experience on Radeons. This gameplay video you're watching was captured on a beefy machine featuring a two cars crossfire setup with Sapphire R9-290X Tri-X and Sapphire R9-290X Vaporx Tri-X, both factory overclocked with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. Crossfire is working via the XDMA technology which handles the data sync between cards completely through the PCI Express buses without the need for additional bridges. Our machine also features i7-4790K CPU stock clocks and 8GB of DDR3 memory, as well as an SSD. We are running latest version of AMD Catalyst Beta Drivers 15.5, featuring optimizations not only for The Witcher 3, but also Project Cars. If you're playing these games on a Radeon card, be sure to get these new drivers to have the best possible performance. You can find a download link in the description of this video. What we're looking at here is Witcher 3 Wild Hunt maxed out in a glorious 60 frames per second. Let's peek into the settings. In the post-processing section we've turned off the motion blur, since in our opinion it made the gameplay experience unpleasant. We're not really after that cinematic experience. The option doesn't have a noticeable impact on the performance, so it's really up to you. Rest of the effects are turned on. Ambient occlusion is maxed out as well with HBAO+. In the graphics tab, frames are capped at 60 frames per second and VSync is on to prevent occasional tearing and help keep frame pacing smooth on Crossfire. Witcher has a hard 60 frames per second cap, so we cannot really go further than this, but there's still some performance buffer we have, as we'll see in a moment. We're playing in full HD and currently we have almost everything maxed out with only except being the hairworks feature that we'll leave off for a while. In the upper left corner throughout the entire video we'll be showing you a bunch of stats you guys have asked for. There's obviously the FPS counter, the CPU usage, RAM and VRAM usage, GPU utilization as well as temperatures of both cards. Keep in mind that it's a crossfire setup and the card on top will always show more heat as the hot air from the second card goes up. It's not the most representative scenario for the cooling effectiveness showcase but it's up there for you. As you can see, we are out in the world with Geralt, the game looks beautiful and we have a solid, stable 60 frames per second. The multi-thread CPU usage distribution looks quite good. There's no visible overload on one core and most of available threads are being used to some degree. At least in this rather open area there's certainly no CPU bottlenecking going on, so that's a great optimization of the Red Engine for an open world game. The game keeps a fairly low video memory use, taking only slightly above 2 gigs of VRAM, and that's impressive given the settings and the visuals we are getting. Slow now, whoa. We going? When the engine switches from the gameplay view to an on-engine cutscene, there's a second of a stutter since cutscenes are in fact limited to 30 frames per second and also have an uber sampling super quality rendering enabled. That's why these character models look so amazing. get the best performance out of your crossfire setup in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, there are a few tweaks you should apply. AMD has prepared a handy guide about optimizing the game for Radeons and you can find the link to it below this video. Most important tweak for crossfire performance scaling is disabling the game's temporal AA option from the renderer. To do that, go to your Witcher 3 installation catalog, then to bin, config, base folder, and open the rendering.ini file in a text editor such as Notepad. Then look up the option named as Enable Temporal AA and change True to False. Then save the file.
Let's jump back on our horse and cruise a little bit around this beautifully crafted open world of The Witcher. The foliage details, the way the environment behaves with grass and trees bowing to the wind look phenomenal with maxed out settings on a PC. As we approach the village, you can see a nice fog effect by the riverbank. You can really immerse in this world, there are lots of little tiny details and props that all add up to the experience. Peasants doing their usual work, chickens running off your way, soldiers keeping the guard. It seems we have a solid 60 frames per second all the way through, so we will scare off this peasant and now let's talk hair works. As you may have heard, there is this little third party eye candy implemented in the PC version of The Witcher that enables real time hair simulation for our hero as well as some wild creatures found throughout the world. Make no mistake, this is a really costly effect performance wise. But with a little tweak in the catalyst drivers, it's not as bad as folks say. Apparently, Hairworks uses tessellation to get this job done, and that's what we are about to change. Hey Let's go to Catalyst Control Center, open the Gaming tab and the 3D Application Settings page. Add The Witcher 3 from the game's installation directory. Now change the tessellation mode to override application settings and change the maximum tessellation level to 8. It will optimize the computational workload without compromising the visual effect. Now let's go to that graphics tab again and enable hair works. We will go with full mode because why not? So there we go, we are running absolutely maxed out Witcher 3 with full hair works enabled in 60 frames per second here on a 2 Sapphire R9 to 90Xs in Crossfire. Notice the girl's hair and the horse tail, as you can see individual hair reacting to moves and wind. If you like this technical video and would like to see more of them, be sure to give a thumbs up, leave a comment telling us what you would like to see and don't forget to subscribe to Sapphire's channel. This was Jacob from Sapphire, enjoy The Witcher 3, game on!